You knew it would eventually come to an end, and Pitt's winning streak does come to an end here on this Saturday night. The Pitt Panthers lose to Georgia Tech at home at the Peterson Event Center, 68-62. This your Pitt edition of Pittsburgh Post Game here on Pittsburgh Sports Live. And I am your host, as always, Mike Osti. I am going to be joined here in a matter of moments by Jordan Michalowski, who is our Pitt basketball beat writer. He was there in attendance covering the game Pitt got down early, unlike their recent streak there, and then were able to come back. So again, showing heart, showing drive, able to come back, make this somewhat of a game, but once again, did fall to Georgia Tech. That does snap snap the three-game winning streak for Pitt, a team that maybe they thought they could make this reasonably four in a row at home and against a similar team record-wise, but not the case. So, George, I got to kind of start right there with the obvious. Pitt won three in a row, including a big win over North Carolina. Two of those three teams had winning records. That was a nice streak Pitt was building on. Mike and I did a show on it as well. Got to give Jeff Capel credit for it. You now get to this game. It feels like a team that Pitt should beat. It's a home game. They don't. They don't win it. They start out struggling. They do come back, but it's not enough. What was the difference of this game compared to the recent streak of wins for Pitt? It was the energy right out of the gates. I mean, we've said it plenty of times this year. It's We're losing track of how many times I've come on with you for coaching <laughs> and Pitt's come out to a slow start. And, and, right. And, you know, today it was the first 35 minutes of the game. Usually it's, right. it was 20, and then they figure it out. But Pitt didn't figure it out until about five minutes left. You know, they trailed by as much as 18. Uh, that lead came with a little over five minutes left for Georgia Tech. Um, Jeff Capel after the game, as well as Mo Gee, uh, they both said they knew, you know, from the moment warmups were going on, from the moment that they got home from North Carolina, that the energy wasn't going to be the same. They just they felt something was off. And, yeah, so no sense of urgency really from Pitt early on. Um, Georgia Tech came in, you know, last place team in the ACC. They came in with energy. Um, they blew the doors off of Pitt. You know, Mike Devo is one of the best guards in the ACC. 22 points for him. Um, they gave it to Rodney Howard down low. He played a great game. So, you know, Pitt had some some good offensive performances. You know, Mogi and John Hughley, pretty much the only ones who produced a lot on offense. But, you know, guard-wise, the guards struggled. I mean, four for 25 combined from the floor from Ithia Horton, Femio Ducali, and Jamari Spurton. So those guys really struggled. But overall, you know, it was, it was just a lack of energy, a lack of, a lack of focus. It does seem like a broken record, death taxes, and, and when you're on the post-game show, it really does feel like we're talking about the same thing there. And I don't know how you get that situation. I guess it's nice that they're aware of what went on, but after the win streak, it's not like Pitt was talking about a postseason or an NCAA tournament berth here by any means, but Jeff Capel was kind of getting rid of some of the detractors. He was able to kind of turn the corner a little bit that unlike last year with even an NBA player and Justin Champagne, that this year, okay, they're going to end strong despite everything that was going on. The win over North Carolina, I don't think anybody expected, and they were able to get a victory on the road. And that now looks like a really bad loss for the Tar Heels as they're looking for seeding for the NCAA tournament and beyond. So just, it's amazing almost to how that, that situation could even occur. But then on the flip side, what led, Pitt to be able to come back in this game? Was it more of something that Pitt was doing that they eventually picked it up? Or did Georgia Tech, because they're a struggling team as well, did they then just get cold and kind of allow Pitt to get back in this game? Is this almost a game that Georgia Tech is lucky to get out of there with a victory with how they played down the stretch, even though Pitt struggled early? Right. Well, I think it's definitely a mixture of both because Georgia Tech is a very bad team. You know, last place in a the ACC that's having a down year as a whole conference. So they've, you know, we talked to the other beat writers up here that, that Josh Passner talked to us after the game and Georgia Tech's been there before, you know, in that situation, like they've blown plenty of games this year um, after being up, after being up big. And he talked to us about that. So I think Georgia Tech really kind of folded down the stretch, you know, uh, Howard fouled out that opened up things down low a little bit, but yeah, you know, Pitt kind of figured out, Georgia Tech's defense near the end. Um, they got some good late points from, you know, Mo Gee and John Hughley, um, which has kind of become a staple is, is some late contributions from Hughley especially. Um, but, you know, Georgia Tech played, you know, different right. types of zones, and 
they switched those zones in and out in even during possessions. Jeff Capel was saying he was like, they're switching up their defense during a possession and start giving our guys fits. So Pitt clearly had some really severe struggles against this Georgia Tech defense. Um, down the stretch, though, they they did uh, they, they did kind of figure it out. They did get some points and, and they defended well. They got to, they forced some turnovers, which they struggled to do all game. Um, and I think that was one of the keys to the game is Georgia Tech caused what 16 turnovers from Pitt and and they right. convert on most of them and Pitt didn't so you know it, was, it, it came down to the first 35 minutes being way too much to come back from and Pitt's been there before and they, they should know better by now to not let it <laughs> 35 minutes yeah we absolutely have seen Pitt struggle early in games or struggle late in games putting those two halves together has been a problem for Pitt most of the season which was kind of to be expected in all reality and also Pitt may be able to hang their hat on defense which is part of how they were able to win those three in a row the defense really picked it up after allowing 90 plus points to Wake Forest not long ago and that being so bad for them defensively they do now lose this one snap a three-game win streak Pitt losing to Georgia Tech 68-62 Jordan Michalowski joining me here on Pittsburgh Sports Live and of course for Pittsburgh sports now George when you look at this box score and you mentioned Mo Gee, of course he steps up in almost 30 points in this game 27 12 rebounds that's a stud performance from him and this is after Horton and others have kind of been the leading scorer for Pitt during most of the win streak and certainly most recently Ugly gets 18 Horton gets 10 3 for 11 shooting for him he really stepped up against North Carolina has been a big driving force for this team recently was it almost a death nail for Pitt? If he's cold, if he can't hit shots, that's almost a recipe for disaster for the Panthers, even when Mo Gee is giving you that kind of effort. It almost also feels like you waste the best performance of Mo Gee almost all year in a loss like this. But then Horton, if he's three for 11, that's hard to get a victory, I'd imagine, for Pitt. Yeah, I, I definitely agree with that. I, I think... I don't think it's it's the complete end of the world, you know, if he goes three for 11, because well, he did hit three threes, and we've seen him you know, right. last year. We've seen him last year, and, and while he's been back this year, go three for nine from three and pit wins. So I think it's more of the combination of all three of the guards, you know, Burton and Odekal. Burton went one for 11 from the floor, and, and Odekal yeah. went 0 for three. He just didn't get any. <laughs> so yeah. I think the whole the whole offense, the whole guard rotation was was struggling. Um, I, I do see where that could come into play because we've been talking over that three game win streak. We were like, yes, Horton. Right. Know, major right. Amazing and you're, and you're finding more offense. You're finding multiple players. Good teams need more than one guy. Right. And then you don't have it in this game. Yeah. It's going to take more than, you know, you should be able to withstand Horton going three for 11. Like that should not be the end of the right. world for them. But, you know, Three for 11 combined with Odakali and Burton going one for 14 combined, that's not going to win games. So it, it's, we've said it all year. They've just got to look for, you know, consistency and, and try to be as complete as they can. And it just, it just didn't show up tonight. It did not. Jordan Michalowski here joining me for Pittsburgh Sports Now. We do have some chat action here, watching every pit game. If pit doesn't come out out of the gate strong, the first 10 minutes they lose. Well, yeah. I mean, I guess that's pretty much the case. It's hard to deny that. Yeah, when Pitt has a sluggish performance, what they hadn't had in a while during the win streak, they came out hot and they were able to compete with those teams, including North Carolina, a very good team, obviously, looking for one away from 20 in terms of their win total. But when Pitt starts out sluggish, it's very hard to come back for Pitt, and they almost did in this game, but even against a bad team, it shows the weakness of Pitt. That yeah, Georgia Tech's a bad team, but Pitt's not that great of a team either. They can't just allow anyone to have such a big lead and then expect anything else is going to happen, especially a poor shorting performance from the rest of the team, despite the great performance there from Mo, Mo Guy. Uh, George, does a performance like this, and obviously this is a knee-jerk comment in a way because this is only one game after a three-game win streak when, as I said again, Jeff Cable was kind of gaining some favor, and he's definitely going to be there next year, but there is pressure on the team next year and him next year to eventually pick this up to maybe at least a winning record. I know fans tell you, they tell all of us, I even got some comments promoting this show. Well, there's no recruits coming in. That's going to be a disaster. Obviously, Jeff Capel has his eyes set on the transfer portal, as he should, really, to kind of fix things quickly. Lost players last year to it, trying to gain some players to it. 
we've seen it all around college sports, and there's no telling what, what the results are going to be there. But does a performance like this in particular, when Jeff Capel and his best player both come out in a postgame press conference, we do have video there on PSL, and admit we were sleeping through the first half of this game, after a win streak at home, on a weekend where you basically could own the Pittsburgh sports news, there's not much else going on besides regionally with West Virginia also playing college basketball and, of course, Duquesne, etc. Pitt could own it. A four-game win streak would give that to them. This is how you gain favor. You get wins against teams that are bad to build a streak. How bad is that? situation and even having that go on that has to go on Jeff Capel and that has to feed into some of the critics that are saying regardless of recruiting it has to be on him when teams dip down the stretch and when you have an effort like this after a win streak that just looks bad on coaching not to say he's not going to be around but that that can't be a positive how how can that go on it's it's a terrible look I mean it's that's what it is really just it's just a bad look I guess that's the easiest way to put it right yeah, it, it, Cable talked about in his post-game press conference, you know, it, it's the players also have to show up. You know, the players have to come out strong. But right. At the same time, it's like if, if you're a coach and you can't wake them up, you know, they've been doing it all year. They've been coming out to slow starts at home. You know, tonight was probably, I mean, I think definitely their biggest crowd of the year at the Pete. Um, they, they couldn't right. have energy. It was senior night. Like, they're yeah, <laughs> they're right. a three-game winning streak. I know. With the biggest crowd of the year, and they still couldn't come out with energy. So, at that point, it's like, well, when will you come out with four wins in a row? You know, it's the worst team in the ACC. Like, everything was set up for you to come out on fire and blow out Georgia Tech at home. But they didn't. It's And it's a terrible look. You know, they are going to look at transfers. Um, they're they're going to see if they can land some gold. You know, they struck gold with Burton and Gee this offseason. So they're going to try, and they're going to try to convince guys to come in. But that's a bad look. And, you know, look. If you look at the last three games of the year, they've got Miami, Duke, and Notre Dame. That's no easy task, and everyone knows that. So <laughs> yeah. let's say Pitt yeah. falls, in, falls in those three. You know, that's a four-game losing streak to end the year again. That's losing eight of your last 11. Mm. That's when you expand and when you forget about the three-game winning streak and the win over Carolina. It's it's a really bad look. And it's, it's – yeah, I do think, as most people think now, like he's clearly going to be back next year. But it's just – continuous like down negative things that are happening with this program yeah. it's it's going to need to change soon and, and i even saw some of my colleagues some of our colleagues before the game talking about how big of a game this could be for Pitt because you as you mentioned senior night you could get a four game win streak and honestly it's very reasonably the last winnable game that Pitt has left on their schedule this almost had to be a win to to end the season on that strong note and, and, and honestly and, yeah. yeah if you win this game if you're Pitt and you win this game now you go into a home game against Miami on Tuesday night. Maybe the Pete's packed for that one. You got confidence. You got the Pete yeah, pack, right. Confidence. You win that one. You got a, you know, Duke. And it's this win today meant so much because it just changes the whole outlook of the end of the year. And it's yeah. just, it was so important to keep that streak going today and take down the, the lesser opponent, really, and one of the worst teams in the ACC in Georgia Tech. But. Yeah, and and now, I mean, that's still, that still is pit with the way the season has gone here. Jordan Michalowski joining me, Pittsburgh Sports Now, Pittsburgh Sports Live. Pitt does lose to Georgia Tech 68-62. They snap a three-game win streak, and as George was alluding to, depending on how this season finishes, that North Carolina win is big and it's bad for the Tar Heels, but it's going to be more and more in the rearview mirror, and Pitt fans are going to forget more and more about that three-game win streak if you go ahead and lose four in a row, even these against good teams when that was snapped off of that loss to Georgia Tech. You mentioned Miami, Duke. It is at home, but number nine Duke right now. Notre Dame, that one on the road the rest of the season for Pitt. Uh, that's, that's rough, certainly, and you do have – the home cooking as maybe an advantage for you here against Miami and Duke. And that could have been part of continuing the win streak. Imagining if Pitt would have finished the year with six out of their last seven or seven in a row. I mean, yeah, that's still only going to be 14 wins. You're going to be well below 500. You're not going to any postseason, but that would really allow Jeff Capel to end the year with some confidence conversely to how the last couple of years ended, even with better teams and better rosters. And he could then use the excuse of, on the court drama, off the court drama, a roster that nobody else probably could win with. We're still trying to figure it out. 
that might have helped going into next year, even though there'd be pressure still there. But yeah, it does look bad right now. Yeah. Yeah. And and let me add, you know, not even would that have added confidence that would have, you know, possibly kept players on this team. You know, yeah. Every single year, who knows who's going to leave any program, obviously with all this transfer portal stuff going on. Um, but, you know, who knows, you know, maybe it's a, a four game losing streak you know, losing eight of their last 11 is going to push some of these guys out the door and then it's all out the window. So it's, it's just a huge loss tonight, honestly. Yeah. Um, even though, you know, it, it doesn't seem like it on paper. If you're just looking at the one game, you're like, ah, fluke against Georgia tech, but you know, the, the rest of the schedule, you know, Notre Dame, uh, Pitt put up a fight against Notre Dame earlier in the year. Um, the Irish are definitely a, look like a better team as of late. You know, Mike Bray's kind of got them rolling now. Near the top yeah, the losing by one point. That was actually the game that Jeff Capel even admitted in a post game. Pitt let that game get away. He 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 yeah. feels like Pitt should have won that game. And if you watch it, they really should have. But they do lose by one in that yeah. one. Yeah. So so they they've got a tough schedule ahead. Notre Dame's doable. You know Miami Miami lost to Virginia today. So that's doable. Yeah. Times, that's doable as well. Duke's just probably one of the most talented teams in the country, if not the most. So and it's going to be less doable. Game. Yeah, that's <laughs> less doable. Yeah, yeah. Less doable. So it's, it's going to yeah. be a tough end of the year. It's going to be a tough end of the year, especially when you have the stink of this game and you snap a three-game win streak, as you mentioned earlier. Jordan Mikulowski, Mike Oste here, our Pitt post-game show. Pitt does lose Georgia Tech 68-62. Mo Guy goes, goes crazy there, 27-12. and But it ends up not working out for Pitt, just not enough around him, not enough offense around him. Horton having that 3-for-11 shooting night just didn't work out for the Panthers there. We do actually have a little bit of chat, chat action here. And you're talking about the transfer portal. You're talking about the impact of players and even who's going to leave and potentially if they end the year sluggish, that may impact some players leaving. I know a lot of people feel like most of this roster should be back, even though you don't know. And you also are going to get Nike Sabandi back next year. So that's another reason why next year's team could look better than this year. He was a player that was emerging last year, out this year with an injury. That's a big underrated factor this team struggling so much this year. He was supposed to be a major key cog this year, but we do have a chatter asking about Ugly and players like that. Are you just from being as inside as you can, even with COVID restrictions, right. are you legitimately worried that the end of this season is important in terms of keeping some of these players? Is it anything you're hearing? Just a gut feeling? Ugly has been mentioned here in the chat as some a player that it seems some fans are worried about leaving if things right. don't don't turn. Would you agree with that statement? So honestly, I I I do not think so. I, I do not I can't see these last four games really affecting him that much or okay. any of the guys. Um from what I have heard, um just from around the program, I know the class of 2020, the recruiting class of 2020, you know, Odikali, Collier, um, yeah. Hughley, um, Jeffers, you know, I, I've heard you know, they want to build this thing up and they're, they're all in on pit. And that's all. So Jeffers too, despite losing his spot. I mean, he's been in and out of the lineup. That's one player I would imagine if he wants playing time going from the starting five to the bench, he can't love that. And next year is going to be harder to crack the lineup. Oh, definitely. And, and yeah, you make a good point. You know, he could, he could be one of the guys that, and even Collier, he's been off. The yeah. Bench. He could go, they could go to smaller schools, you know, right. who knows with that. But, but from what I've heard and, and the gut feeling right now is, you know, John likes where he's at, you know, okay. John's support system likes where he's at with Pitt. You know, after this game, we come out of the press conference and, and John's high school coach, Shet Mason, is on the court with his kids playing basketball. Um, so, you know, they're always down here. They've got Marlon Barnes committed um, from their high school. So I think John, for the most part, there have been whispers, you know, as honestly, there's, there's always going to be you know, last year, there were whispers about Ithiel Horton leaving yeah like, his Instagram posts <laughs> right so, there's always there's always nonsense that's spread around the internet but I think yeah up until this point um I, I think most of the guys all the key players for Pitt just seem like all things all signs point to them coming back for next year but yeah like we said who knows they losing 80 or last 11 you know they're getting frustrated with all these losses right so we'll see I guess that always is the way we kind of have to end some of these shows. We'll see. It's just all up in the air. Yeah, we'll just, we'll see. It's up in the air, even though it does feel like a broken record at times. And that'll do it for Pitt on this night as they do lose to Georgia Tech, snapping a three-game win streak. They now have lost to Tech.
68-62. We will then see what the rest of the schedule holds for the Panthers. But as George did say, you at least have some home cooking. Miami, Duke, even though they're a top 10 team and then ending against Notre Dame, a very winnable team that you also would imagine the team would get up for after the way they lost a couple months ago, feeling like that you let the one get away. So I think one thing you got to watch, and we saw it be negative in this game, is the energy of this pit team and how they get up for games. They're not maybe going to have as much of a crowd now in the next game because some fans may say, well, I'm done with the season. You are dealing with that. They These are young kids. They're, they're going to feel, I'm sure they, they're all on Twitter. They feel the negative energy that's been around this program all year. They may like it. <laughs> they may not like it in terms of motivating themselves, and that could get them up or down for games. So we will see what that energy is like. But it was bad in this game, and this is just not a good look for Pitt in a very winnable game that should have extended that winning streak to four in a row, even though, to be fair to the team, it probably shouldn't even have been a three-game win streak because, of course, no one predicted they would beat North Carolina. Carolina, but it's just that that up and down season that we have been trekking along here. George, I appreciate the time as always. I'll send you on your way. Have a good night, man. Jordan Michalowski there at Peterson Event Center as Pitt does lose to Tech. Now, potentially, are they starting a new winning streak or a new losing streak? We will wait to find out as they lose for the first time in the last week or so, snapping that three-game win streak. This one, a loss to Tech, 68-62.